in Africa, unfortunately, only 4% of the countries have a youth league for girls and only 22% of the countries have a youth league for boys. European youth players are getting to play three times more games, you know, through their development period compared to the rest of the world. So how do we close this gap? and give more opportunity in the local market. For me, what's missing really is the, uh, the the lack of competition because you have academies playing against each other, but the leagues is very important. It's it's That's what makes you grow as a player, uh, When whether you are 10 or 15 or, or 20 years old. It's important to play at the highest level against um, uh, um, players your age, and I'm talking men and women. Most European scouts who come into Africa limit their activity to the capital cities. But if you come to Cameroon and you spend all your time in Yaoundé, you haven't seen 90% um, of Cameroon, and that's really the problem. So for every Samuel Eto'o, Africa loses 10. You know, we talk about sort of governance and how governance can help the pathways for African footballers, both in the men's and women's game, fashion game. Actually, governance is preventing the pathway because at the moment, immigration makes it so, so difficult for players to play in the European leagues and, and as a result, develop. There are fantastic kids all over the world that deserve an opportunity in sport that uh, aren't allowed because of the rules that are meant to protect, and we agree with that, but um, are maybe holding back development and opportunity. I think we've got to find a way that governance promotes the pathway, it doesn't block it. The rule across the board is the same. The, the problem is what often gets lost is the, the local environment and infrastructure in places like Argentina and the United States and other countries have the benefit of infrastructure and coaching and development and opportunity in those domestic leagues. Let us also not forget that it is an ecosystem. So how do you prepare the coaches? How do you prepare the academy directors um, You know who are going to train them because it seems like there aren't enough um, trainers either or coaches either. For me, standards are universal. So what works properly in North America is the same that works in Europe, it's the same that works in Asia. The problem is customizing those standards to local realities. That's where some people have failed in the past, and that's where lessons need to be learned. We go to South Sudan, which is the tallest nation in the world. You don't want the kids to be playing tiki-taka. You want them to coach them in a way that takes in, into account their physical advantages. And those are the things that we need to do in Africa. Not just, not, it's not one size fits all. It's about taking European solutions that are proven and fusing, the, fusing them with local realities and customizing a model that works for Africa. To Kingsley's point earlier, Africa's unique in that there's so much talent in really remote areas, uh, they're not just in the cities. I think in Europe, it may be the opposite where a lot of the talent, you know, certainly I, I grew up playing, you know, on a council estate in Birmingham in the inner city. And I think that's a story for lots of, you know, professional footballers, both men and women. But I think, you know, we've got to look more specifically about the nuances of Africa where the talent may be um, in more remote places. Look at FIFA TMS 2020. Uh, the exports out of Africa directly were only $54 million out of the $5.9 billion. So it is a very, very small amount. So I think the long-term focus needs to be what is the best way to get investment into domestic markets and not at the senior level only. It's a whole ecosystem. We're only talking about the top 0.01% of elite players who make it in their country and then into Europe or, or the US. But there are millions there. Yes, I would be in favor of, of the Super League only if uh, we would start also at the same time at the bottom. If the African Super League is the one that is going to generate interest and bring more investment into Africa, yes, by all means. But for me, what's important is how is the investment going to be or how will the funds and revenues be used to make Africa stand on its own feet and really reach mm. out to these remote corners, have the proper um, talent ID systems, scouting systems using data, the grassroots programs, you know, the coaches, the referees, especially female coaches, female players. So um, 
for me, it, it, it really is the debate. How do you trickle everything down all the way to the bottom of the football ecosystem and the pyramids?